Hi, everybody, and welcome to Connecting ACO Community. My name is Derek Burmel, and I'm the Artistic Director of the American Composers Orchestra. And uh, I want to welcome you here today. We've got a very exciting edition uh, for, of Connecting ACO Community. Uh, we've got Aya Simone, who is joining us on harp and vocals, and we're going to be looking into and listening to uh, her collaboration with Sharon Nova, who's a good friend of ACO, who's performed with ACO, played her work. And so we're very, very happy to welcome Aya to be with us today and Shara on video. And uh, I just want to say that today's performance and talk is made possible by a lead gift from Augusta Gross and Leslie Samuels, good friends of ACO. And thank you to all the ACO staff who've done such a great job. And I know that many of you are signing in from all over the place, all over the country, and perhaps all over the world. And um, I just wanted to say to you that you can use the chat button, uh, which is located uh, on, your, on your screen uh, right there, along with all the other info. You can use the chat button to communicate with us and with others on this particular performance. So please, if you're feeling something, if you want to let us know where you're calling in from, please do. Uh, and also, if you want to let us know how you feel about the music, if you have questions for Aya along the way, uh, you know, she'll try to uh, answer them uh, as they come in. So please communicate with us using the chat function here on StreamYard. And um, what else can I tell you? Uh, well, one thing that I can certainly tell you is that the uh, you might have slightly better result if you listen with headphones. So StreamYard that we're using now actually has a quite nice dynamic range. And so if you happen to have a pair of headphones and it's not too much trouble, you might want to slip them on so that you can listen to this performance uh, in greater uh, dynamic with greater dynamic range. So uh, with that, uh, I would like to introduce the performer and and I shouldn't just call her performer because uh, she's not only playing the harp and and uh, and also is going to be singing, but she's also uh, been involved in the creation of this work too. So we're going to learn about that. So without further hesitation, Aya Simone. Welcome, Aya. So Hi. Nice to you. <laughs> Are you coming to us uh, live from Detroit? Yes, I'm in my home in Detroit, Michigan. West Side girl, through and through. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, uh, spent my time, uh, a lot of time in Detroit. And so can you tell us um, uh, a little bit about your, uh, how you came to work with Shara and just a little bit about how this piece got started. Uh, well, uh, before meeting her, um, I wasn't uh, super familiar um, with her at all. Um, she came to the uh, Kresge um, organization, the Kresge Grant Organ uh, Foundation's um, award ceremony because I was one of the 2018 awardees. And we, you know, we briefly met and kind of just exchanged information. She followed me on Instagram. And um, then after this, like she then after that, then she approached me just recently for the ACO thing. So that was kind of like how it all started. And so <laughs> it's so wonderful because you're both from Detroit. You're both songwriters and singers and performers on other instruments. And so um, it just seems like you have a lot in common, a lot to share, but also a different perspective on what you're doing as well. So, um, yeah. so, 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 how did this piece? Um, how did you get involved with this piece? How was it the process of collaborating with her? Uh, I think it was. It it really started off relatively like, I don't know, not esoteric, but just more like you know, kind of just heady, philosophical. It's like what you know. What does it feel like? What it, what do we think about this? Um, and I thought that was really really interesting because, with to me made me feel way more comfortable because I'm t I tend to be that kind of person. <laughs> so like that was like right off the bat, it, it just was like a very like synergistic, organic kind of vibe. 
And she, we talked about like, what is the thing that we're trying to say or what are we thinking about? And we're thinking about change. And like we, you know, this whole thing with COVID and just like the political moment that we're in right now is about like change and like the uncertainty of it all and the and the and the fear of uncertainty. Like we just kind of none of us really feel particularly grounded right now. And so that was kind of like the impetus or like the the kind of entering into what came out to be this beautiful song. Well, as you know, um Shara is on her way down to Florida yeah. to participate, to, to, uh, to take some time to work on her own writing at uh, the Hermitage uh, Foundation. And so she's driving right now, but she was kind enough to make a video for us. And so why don't we have you retire to the uh, virtual green room, as we call it, and we'll hear from Shara about this, a little bit about this collaboration and, uh, and then we'll bring you back to perform for us and we'll hear the song from you. All right, thank you. Okay, so, uh, so we'll see you soon. And for everybody out there, uh, feel free to use the chat function in order to communicate with Aya. If you wanna tell her anything about, you know, or, or you wanna ask her questions, uh, feel free to use that function. So now we're gonna hear from Cheryl from Shara Nova, who's going to tell us a little bit about uh, her uh, viewpoint on this piece, Let a Change Come. Hello, ACO community. I'm Shara Nova, composer and performer based in Detroit, Michigan. Thank you so much for joining for the world premiere of the song Let a Change Come with Aya Simone. I want to be sure to thank American Composers Orchestra for being the first responders in late March when all of the concert cancellations, recording sessions were evaporating so rapidly and we um, were wondering what in the world we were going to do. And so ACO reached out and gave this uh, commission for us to have the opportunity to reflect on the time that we're in and I'm so grateful for that. I had met Aya at a Kresge Award ceremony in Detroit several years ago and um, was just thrilled at the opportunity to work with her. So we um, created the song through a series of just conversations and phone calls and asking what, what word was coming up for us that, that we really wanted to explore in music and the word change came up for for both of us and so I wanted to um, share with you some thoughts that I jotted down just kind of questions that I was asking myself as we were writing the piece together um, so here goes my some notes from me change is rarely comfortable it comes often with losses. It costs us our neatly formed identities. It costs us trading what we know for the unknown, and there's risk there. But we are at our best when we're willing to take the leap to grow. I started to ask myself more and more questions. What am I willing to change in me and by what means? What do the words genuine change mean for you right now? And what change are you afraid of? What change is there for you as an individual? And then what change is there as a, as a person connected to the great us all? What changes are offering possibilities? As we take time to reflect on this word, change, I thank you for your time and for being here in this moment to experience music and to open yourself to what the music might reveal to you about yourself or about us. Please give a warm online welcome for Aya Simone and the world premiere 
of Let a Change Come. Thank you. When I said let a change come, I didn't know what that might mean. So face this empty page, so ride up on the slate. When I said let a change Just a to be towards the certainty of change, 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 change. Wow. Thank you so much, Aya. That was uh, Aya Simone uh, in her collaboration with Sharon Nova uh, and the world premiere of Let a Change Come. 
which uh, was written by Shara, along with Aya, with they worked together, they collaborated, and uh, and um, and now actually earlier, this is the uh, the only connecting ACO community commission so far where you've heard two stages of the collaboration. We heard Shara a few weeks ago uh, sing us the song that she was working on. She played it on guitar and sang. And now we just got to hear Aya Simone transform that by taking, taking it and singing it herself, making it her own, and playing it on the harp. And I'm so curious to ask Aya some questions uh, about her performance and about her playing. Um, we have people who are writing in, including Shara Nova, who thought it was beautiful with many exclamation points. And, um, and if anybody has any questions for Aya or any other questions they, that, you know, that they like to ask, now is a good time to do that in the chat. You can use it, your chat function. Um, once again, uh, let's bring on Aya Simone to, uh, to talk. That was beautiful. Thank you so much, Aya. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Ooh. I'm a little wet. I'm like, I'm hot. <laughs> it's a it's it's definitely an emotional piece for me. Like I've I've been kind of sitting with it for a while. Well, I guess everybody's feeling change now, feeling the necessity for change, feeling the urgency, um, fierce urgency of now. Uh how 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 has it been for you in this time to make work to be performing to be writing have you been able to write i know i mean it's just been such a such a time um of reflection um also hope but um but also a lot of a lot of hardship uh, well, so yeah, um, definitely um the general <laughs> outline would definitely be a lot of um a lot of you know um just challenges and just de depressive moments. Um, is this is a very very difficult and tough time, and so I I've definitely spent a lot of time inside, obviously, and also um, just in self reflection, getting clearer on like who I am and like what my purpose is, and so like it's been difficult to actually make work. However. I think a huge part of the creative process is also stillness and like reflecting on things that have happened to you, reflecting on like what is going on right now, reflecting on the future. Like that is also a part of creativity. So in that stillness, I've definitely worked on a lot <laughs> to lead into that very next process of creating like a tangible work. Um, and so the other, I also like, and the huge reason why, you know, we had to reschedule my performance was because I was actually, you know, effect, directly affected by COVID. My uncle passed away two, uh, about a couple of days before the performance. And so that also kind of, you know, aroused me emotionally. So it's been very difficult. However, I was able to finish my very first single, Frostbite. Um, which is, it speaks, it's actually a timely piece. I wrote it maybe like two years ago and, no, about three years ago actually. And it spoke to the feeling of being isolated and alone. And I think we, as the collective, we felt that, you know, especially with, with everything that's going on. And so I was happy that I was able to like muster up the strength and courage to release this song into the world. Right now it's just on Bandcamp but it'll be on all streaming platforms um, July 10th. Oh, okay. Well, we'll look for that. Congratulations on finishing uh, creative work at such a difficult time. I mean, I, you know, it, it sounds like you, I, I, and I remember when that happened and, and when you were, that's why we had, we had Shara originally perform herself, but to our benefit, because we got to see the different stages of this collaboration. And I was thinking, as you sang about the difference, and and with what you just said about uh, about stillness, um, about the difference between internal change and external change, the kind of change that you can't control, like what's happened to us uh, with with the pandemic, but at the same time, internal change and growth, which sometimes happens with that stillness. Mm, absolutely, absolutely. 
definitely a lot of that. <laughs> Luckily, I've had like the support of like family and friends and my partner has been really like really dope in helping sustain me through this time. Also a therapist, you know. <laughs> it, it doesn't hurt, right? It doesn't hurt, add it to the pot. Tell us a, a little bit about your, because one of the things that's so beautiful about your performing is the, is the instrument itself, the harp. Um, how did you start playing the harp? I, I would venture that probably a lot of people um, have never actually heard somebody sing and play the harp before. Yeah, uh, so I started, so let me just go way, way back, you know, to 92. <laughs> I've been singing, well, I've been just singing um, my whole life. So that was like, the the voice was my first instrument. I did do a little bit of piano, but then I, I like, I didn't really like it as much, but I started the harp um, my freshman year at Cass Tech High School. Um, and you know, with the heart program under the tutelage of Patricia Terry Ross, um, it was her last, actually her last year that that she would teach before Lydia Cleaver came to take her place. Yes. But I went um, to school with Lydia Cleaver. Oh my God, that's so cool! I love her. And so um, that's kind of how I got into it. And originally, I had no interest in ever playing the harp or another instrument. I was just like, I just want to be a singer. I wanted to be an opera singer, and. I was actually kind of placed in the class um, against my will <laughs> because all of the health classes were full that hour. Cause you know, you take your physical education credit. So gym, and then you take health. All the health classes were full and I had already taken gym. So they were like, well, you need something on your schedules and you're a music curriculum person. So heart. And I was just like, what? I don't even, what? So I walked in there and like I stomp, stumped out because I was just super rebellious and was just like, went back to my counsel, like, girl, you're going to change this. And I argued with her for about 10 minutes and then, you know, let's just say I lost. <laughs> and and so then I had to keep it, keep the class for at least a semester. But then I found out it was a, such an amazing instrument and outlet. And it ended up being so cathartic for me and w what I didn't know I needed at the time. And I, and um, uh, Ms. Cleaver, she, at the end of the, the that school year, offered to, for me to play a harp and, vo harp and vocal, play harp for harp and vocal. And I don't know, her believing in me and like my, my talent was just, that was, um, you know what I'm saying? I can't even explain it in words. Like it was such a huge inspiration for me to keep going. Mm. It makes such a difference when there's someone that believes in you, uh, you know, to to help you along the way. Because it's not an easy it's not an easy way. No matter what you do in life, but especially in music. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and the harp is, did you, so now what is the instrument that you're playing and is, have you been playing it a long time and? This instrument? Yeah, because you must be very attached to your actual instrument. Yeah, uh, so this, um, this is Ebony. I don't know, you can kind of see more of her, but, okay. <laughs> but um, I call her Ebony. She's my very first harp. I didn't get my first harp until after I graduated from college. So by the time I had, graduated, I had been playing the harp for about eight or so years, or like eight, about eight, yeah, about eight-ish years or so. And so I was using stu the student harps at the schools. And this one was a gift. My mom surprised me at my graduation party with the harp um, from Lion and Healy. And it's been my baby ever since. I've had it since 2014. And <laughs> wow. it's been a long road with her. Um, but do I'm also going to ever need to upgrade or do you, are you going to stay with that harp forever or? So great question. So I am currently fundraising for a new harp because this is my very first harp and it's a student harp and it doesn't quite have the rich sound as like, you know, uh, you know, uh, like a true concert grand harp. And so I'm, it's, it's been a long road with my baby, but I just need to, I need to upgrade because I'm in a just different stage of my career. So if you go on my Instagram or on my Twitter, um, at Aya Simone, um, you'll see that I have a GoFundMe up. I'm trying to raise uh, $50,000 for a new instrument. 
I'm so glad I play the clarinet sometimes. <laughs> I'm so jealous because I'm like, wow, I really can't pick this harp up and take it just anywhere. <laughs> yeah. I'm so jealous of flowers and violinists, all of y'all. <laughs> wow. Well, um, uh, there, there are some, a few comments and questions that, uh, that I noticed that are coming in here. And uh, one person asked, what's your songwriting process? Um, as well as your process of interpreting a piece. So what are those two things? How do they tie into each other? Or how are they different? Hmm. My songwriting process, I because I've just gotten used to being a harpist and how harmonic the harp is, I usually know the chords first. I'm like the chords, once I know the chords, I can think about the melody and I can think about the words. The words actually come last, <laughs> honestly, wow. uh, for me. It's very harmony, melody, words. <laughs> and so um, that's kind of like my general songwriting process, but there have, it's other original songs that where I have words before I have, but it's it's usually in general, it's the music first and then the, the lyrics. But um, as far as my, as far, what was the other part of the question? A, a process of interpreting. Yeah, well, and and how how did that work with Shara? Were, were was it intimidating to uh, to some people were wondering was it intimidating to to hear her perform a while ago? Was it helpful? How was the process? You know, getting into um, get, writing words with her first, which may not be the way that 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 you usually write. So when she sent me the recording, I actually had. I had some ideas of how I wanted to like shift um, some of the things around, and some of it actually came out in the performance today. However, um, you know, with my uncle, like what, like what? Oh, just like repeating some things, like I'll raise today. You know what I'm saying? Like those words echoed like really um, in my spirit. So like I was just like whatever. How in the performance I was like whatever like resonates most with me, I just repeat it. Like we, we, I know we tend to like respond as listeners, like to things that are repeated and we start to hear them and feel them and experience them on like a physiological level. So that's kind of where I was thinking about with like Shara's like tune, I mean, not tune, but peace. <laughs> but um, yeah. Well, that's that kind of a piece because it, it has different sections. It's not just, you know, it's, it's almost a song in several parts, you know? So. Yeah, it's really, it's like, it's talking about like, it's really from a personal and then it's like from this collective. And then it's also just like, you know, a response to that. Cause like in the beginning, when I said let a change come, I'm like reflecting, it's almost like a soliloquy. It's like, I don't know what that really mean. What do I need? What do I, what is this? And like, then it's like to lose people along the way, then it's externalized. It's like, I don't even have the words to s express. Like, I can't even process this, but you know, I'll risk, I'll dare, I'll still, you know, continue on. You know, I want more, you know, let's start over. Like all of these things are like an invitation, you know, to, to change. Well, that's a beautiful way to to wrap this up. Um, thank you so much, Aya, for sharing your your talents with us. Um, we're so grateful. Thank you, Shara, from the road to Florida, <laughs> from Detroit, and um, and I'm I'm so grateful for this collaboration that you brought us this brand new music that would not have existed otherwise. So um, so thank you so much, and thank you to the audience for being here with us today and uh, participating in connecting ACO community, which is something that we do every week at this time. We've been, ACO has been commissioning new work. And uh, actually we can share, if you want uh, to support this project or other projects that the American Composers Orchestra does, you can uh, you can take a look in the chat window and feel free to support uh, this orchestra. And please learn more about Aya Simone, go to her Instagram page, go to her webpage. Uh, uh, to learn more about what she does and also her role as a filmmaker, which we didn't even get to talk about. I know. Um, 
but there's so much more. There's a lot to, more to know about what she does. So thank you all so much. And, um, and thank you, Aya. Um, thank you, and please keep tuning in, everybody, uh, on Sundays. Uh, and, and next week, we're going to have another very special collaboration for you as well. So thank you from ACO. And thank you, Aya. <laughs>